Well, good morning. good morning. All right, good to be with you. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, you may have been here, uh, Pastor DJ and our church admin, Heather, brought a great message. And in it, they talked about the importance of community and how that we have been created and called for it. Now, it's no secret that connection and community are not only powerful, but they are necessary for us. The benefits of being connected to a healthy community, it's an important adjective to use there, are seemingly endless. The, 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 the benefits of it are seemingly endless. Individuals are far more healthy and productive in their lives when they are connected than when they're not. And one of the greatest strengths that the church has always had has been able to be able to provide space for people to connect to a healthy, thriving community. But it begs the, begs the question, to what end are we doing that? Does the connection and community we experience on a Sunday or a Wednesday night at a group, does it only exist for our personal well-being? Or could it be that there is an even greater purpose that God has in mind when we connect with one another in community? And we learned last week that ultimately, the good news about Jesus is exactly that. It's about Jesus. It's not about us, right? It's all about Jesus. It's about his kingship. It's about his kingdom. So while there are certainly personal benefits to being part of a group or a, a small group or a larger community like the church, there must be an even greater reason for connecting than just our own well-being. In other words, we were created and called to community for a very specific purpose. And I think it's one that is often overlooked and, uh, when it's considered, but it's one that if we want to be people who live out this mission that we have, to be people who are changed lives, changing lives, then we cannot miss out on this greater purpose that God has for building a healthy community in our church. In fact, I wanna ask you, if you're connected here at Genesis, why do you do it? That's a rhetorical question. You don't have to answer it, maybe in your mind. But why do you do it? What, what is your motivation for getting connected here at Genesis? And even if this is your first time at Genesis, which glad you're here today, I would ask you a similar question. Why do you maintain the connections you have in your life? T to what end do they exist? What is your motivation for being connected with other people? Now, I want you to hold on to your answers because while I believe uh, you answered those questions in a way that there, there's no wrong answer to that, really, I will bet that your answer to those questions is incomplete. And so grab your phone, open up the Bible app. If you haven't done so already, you can go to the YouVersion Bible app, follow along with everything I'm gonna cover here throughout the book of Romans. There's cool features in there. You can take notes, you can make highlights, all that kind of good stuff. If you have your paper Bible with you, we are gonna be back in Romans chapter one, starting in verse eight. And actually we're gonna be spending the month of, or most of the month, of September in chapter one. So just be prepared for that. Now, last week, as we got started in the book of Romans and looked closely at what the book is ultimately about, does anybody remember the answer to that question? What is the book ultimately about? Jesus. Jesus. That's a safe answer in church. I realize that, <laughs> right? If the pastor asks a question, just Jesus, right? You're going to be close, I'm sure. But all kidding aside, the author of the book, Paul, who is an apostle of Jesus after Jesus' death and resurrection. He's going around the world. He's telling people about this good news about Jesus. He writes this book and he, from, from the very start, there are no questions about who this book or this letter he is writing is about. He makes it clear. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. And we talked about last week, the importance of keeping that front and center as we go through the book of Romans. And I really want you to do that as we go through Romans chapter one and Romans chapter two, because Paul has a greater thing in mind than what he's going to say in those first two chapters. Paul is making an argument throughout the entire 16 chapters of this book 
And so if you miss a week or two weeks, it's really, a, go back and listen to it because Paul is establishing an argument that he's going to make and prove over the 16 chapters that he goes through. And he starts with, by the way, I'm not writing this because I want to tell you all about me. I want to tell you about how amazing you all are. I'm writing this because I want to make sure you understand the one thing that unites us more than anything else, and that's the good news about Jesus. And then, as he sort of continues his introductory remarks into the book, he moves from a focus on who the book is about to his heart and motivation behind writing all of it. That Paul has a deep-seated reason for writing the book of Romans. And while it will serve greater purposes than I think he could have ever imagined, his motivation originally is locked in these first few introductory remarks that he makes starting in verse eight. And so as we pick it up in verse eight, we'll see the heart behind everything Paul is going to write from this moment forward in the remaining chapters of the book of Romans. In these eight verses, from verse eight through verse 15, Paul gives his ultimate desire for why he writes Romans. And it just so happens to also be the often overlooked purpose of deep connection. All right, Romans chapter one, here we go, verse eight. Paul says, let me first say that I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith in him is being talked about all over the world. God knows how often I pray for you. Day and night, I bring you and your needs in prayer to God, whom I serve with all my heart by spreading the good news about his son. Now stop there, because it's worth noting that while Paul was known as being an incredible apostle, evangelist, preacher, he was one of the most assertive and clear communicators of the good news about Jesus. At the very core, Paul is a pastor. He has a pastor's heart because Paul loves people. He loves Jesus and he loves people. And Paul loved the church and his love of both is displayed in these couple of verses because not only does he give thanks for the church in Rome, but he, he also gives thanks for the faith each person who belongs to that church has in Jesus. And then furthermore, Paul says, I have been in constant prayer for you. Day and night, he says, he is praying for them and their needs. They are constantly on his mind. They are constantly on his heart. These are the words of a man who loves the people of the church of Rome. And he's never even met them. And it's this love for them that motivates him to write what he says next. Verse 10, one of the things I always pray for is the opportunity, God willing, to come at last to see you. For I long to visit you so I can bring some spiritual gift that will help you grow strong in the Lord. And when we get together, I wanna encourage you in your faith, but I also wanna be encouraged by yours. You know, Paul doesn't want to just connect with the church in Rome and the people who belong to it via a letter. That's not his ultimate desire. He wants to be with them, present with them. He wants to look them in the eyes, face to face. He doesn't want to just connect with them through words on a page. He wants to connect with them in real space and in real time. And not only so that he can help them grow and be encouraged in their faith, but Paul even says, so that they can encourage and help him grow in his faith. You know, I was thinking about it. If, if there was anybody that didn't need the encouragement of the church, it had to have been Paul. I mean, Paul seems to have it all together for the most part. And he will admit, no, I'm not perfect. But I mean, he's, he's following Jesus as closely as maybe anybody on the face of the earth ever has. And yet he's the same guy who says, I want to be together with you. Not just words on a page. I want to look you face to face so that I can encourage you and I, my faith can grow as much as yours might grow from that. Because Paul knows a secret about being intimately connected with each other in the church. 
There is something that Paul knows about being connected in community, both collectively on a large scale and intimately on a small scale that you cannot duplicate anywhere else. And he wants the church in Rome to know about it. And he himself wants to be a part of it. And it's a secret that he reveals in the final verses of this section in Romans 1. This is his motivation for writing all of this. Verse 13, I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, that I planned many times to visit you, but I was prevented until now. I want to work among you and see spiritual fruit, just as I have seen among other Gentiles. For I have a great sense of obligation to people in both the civilized world and the rest of the world, to the educated and the uneducated, uneducated alike. So I am eager to come to you in Rome to, to preach the good news. Okay, so let me just recap a little bit here. Paul expresses in verse eight and nine, how much he loves and cares for the people who are part of the church in Rome. He's a pastor. He loves the people that are part of that church. And then in verses 10 through 12, he then tells them how he so badly wants to be with them. He wants to be face to face. He wants to rub shoulders with them. It's his desire to be as connected with them as they are with each other. And then in verses 13 through 15, he shares his motivation behind all of it. Why would I want to do that? Why would I want to be more intimately connected with the people of this church? Because Paul doesn't just want to connect with those who are part of the church in Rome because he wants a few more friends. Quite honestly, Paul doesn't probably need any more friends. You might be thinking that right now too. I don't need any more friends. He doesn't want to connect with them because he wants to get over his loneliness. And Paul was at oftentimes, he was lonely. That wasn't his main desire. That wasn't his motivation for being in connection with the church. He doesn't even want to connect with them because he needs something from them. Paul loves and desires to connect with the church in Rome for one specific reason. And my guess is that all the reasons that we are motivated to connect with each other, whether we're a part of the church or not, and the people in our lives, it may not be including this one very specific reason. Paul reveals in this that he wants to connect with them and stay connected with each other and to have them stay connected with each other because he knows connection strengthens impact. This is Paul's motivation for community. Is that your motivation for community? By being more connected with each other, the church and its people are able to have a greater impact than if they didn't. And Paul's desire to meet with the church in Rome is to motivate them towards this end. I revealed earlier that there's some discord among the church in Rome. The Jews and the Gentiles, you know, they're not getting along great. The Jews were uh, excommunicated from the city of Rome for a number of years, about a decade. And now they've come back and the church looks a lot different than when they left. And they're like, what's going on? And the Gen there's some infighting going on here. And Paul is like, look, I want to get together with you face to face because ultimately our goal in community is not to feel good about ourselves. That could be a good benefit of it, but that's not the goal. His, uh, his desire is that we would get together in community so that we would strengthen the impact that we could have on the world. We cannot do this alone. We can't do it isolated. This mission that Jesus gave us to go into the world and, and, and preach the good news and baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy, we can't do that in an isolated situation. We have to be connected. And the more connected we are, the stronger our impact can be. Now, there's a series of other benefits that come with being connected with each other, and we know what those are. And likely, those are the main motivations behind our connections in life, right? It cures our loneliness. We have a place, a safe place, maybe we can talk about what's going on. And all, all those things are amazing. But at the heart of it, God's community, the church exists to bring the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven. And we cannot do that if we are disconnected from each other. And yes, being connected will benefit you. It will, it'll, it'll cure your loneliness. It'll give you a greater hope and a joy and peace, 
But, but that isn't its ultimate purpose, at least not in the kingdom of God. Connecting with each other in the church is a means to a greater end. Look, look what Paul says. He says, I want to meet with you and be with you together. And in verse 13, he says, I want to work among you and see spiritual fruit. Just as I've seen among them. I want, to, I want to come and be with you and be connected with you so that we can see the fruit of the kingdom come to life in this world. I am so eager to come to you in Rome to preach the good news. Notice he doesn't say, I'm so eager to come to you so we can have a good meal. Nothing wrong with a good meal, okay? It's always a good to have a good meal. Meals are powerful, don't get me wrong. But that's not the ultimate purpose of connection in the kingdom of God. Paul, he wants to make it really clear to those who are listening, I wanna come and be with you because we have been tasked and commissioned to make an impact in the world with the good news about Jesus. And we can only do that when we are intimately connected with one another. Yeah, I got to thinking about this principle or this truth. And, and I wondered if you could find proof of it anywhere else other than in the church. And, and here's what I found. There's been studies about this done. And a study revealed that 96% of employees in the workplace who are connected to their colleagues are satisfied with their current role. And this is in contrast to only 60% of those who are disconnected to their colleagues. It's an almost 40% better chance that you'd be satisfied in the role that you have in your workplace, regardless of what it is, as long as you are connected to the people that you work with. But here's the interesting thing. 94% of those employees who said, I'm satisfied with my job, are more productive because they feel connected to their colleagues and they're twice as likely to go above and beyond their responsibilities and drive innovation. Likewise, research has shown that across all grade levels, students who feel more connected to school have higher attendance rates, higher academic outcomes, and higher graduation and post-secondary success rates. Studies show that positive school connectedness has been consistently linked to various positive health outcomes, including lower levels of substance abuse, better mental health, and reduced violence. Here's my point. Even in school and in the workplace, being more connected strengthens impact. Employees who are more connected to their colleagues in the workplace are twice as productive as those who are not. Students who are more connected to their friends and their teachers and the administration of a school are t- almost twice as likely to have a higher graduation rate and a higher academic success. People are far more productive with their time and their resources when they have healthy connections with others than when they don't. They are more apt to make a positive impact on their work, the world, and they feel connected with the people around them, enabling them to do that. It's almost like God hardwired that in us. And it should be no surprise as we read Romans 1, what Paul is getting at, the connection strengthens impact. It's how we've been created. It's it's the desire that God has for us as we come together. We We don't just come together on a Sunday morning to sing songs and to listen to God and then go home and not talk to anybody. What we do here on a Sunday morning ought to strengthen the impact that we have in the world. That's what it exists to do. Otherwise, we might as well just not do this. The the, the whole idea behind connection and community is to make a greater impact in the world, that the kingdom of God would come here on earth as it is in heaven. The church's impact is affected by the strength of its connection. And the stronger the community, the healthier the community, the larger the impact and vice versa. It's one major reason why the author of Hebrews, which I would argue is Paul, writes these words in Hebrews 10. And and we've heard these verses before, if you've been here. He says, let us not think of ways to motivate one another, or let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works, and let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing 
near. Let's think of ways to motivate each other. How? To acts of love and good work. Let's get together so that our impact in the world would be strengthened. We need to be motivated to make an impact. We, we just do. I don't know. I'm, like, I'm guilty of this too. Honestly, like on a Saturday, I don't really want to make an impact on the world. <laughs> Some of you felt that yesterday. You're just like, I don't, you know, like I need motivation. It's also why if you don't show up here for two months straight, the impact of, that you're going to have on the world for the kingdom of God is going to diminish greatly. We need this. We need that connection with each other because the stronger and the healthier our connection, the greater our impact for the good news of Jesus. And that's what we're all about. Is it not? A few of you are with me. The rest of you are like, no, this is for me, right? No. Just kidding. It's okay. I mean, it's no secret that when the church's connection to each other is unhealthy and dysfunctional, it makes very little impact in the world which is why you could argue that a clear measure of the strength of a church community is in the impact they're making in the world. Churches that have strong community and strong connection among them are making a greater impact in the world. Since connection strengthens impact, then a church's impact will be a direct measure of its strength of connection in its community, which is helpful because... It's possible to believe we have a strong sense of connectedness as a church, but then we have to ask the question, would our impact in the world support that? And it's a good question to ask of our church and of ourselves even. Here's what Paul knew. Paul knew that it was the church in Rome's desire to make an impact in their city. They wanted the good news of Jesus to be known among the citizens of Rome. And he wanted to connect with them to encourage them in that vein. He wanted to be with them face to face to help strengthen the impact they would make in their city. Now, unfortunately for Paul, he would never get the opportunity really to do this, at least not in the way that he'd hoped. He would make it to Rome but his entire time there, he'd be under house arrest. And even when he does make it to Rome, it, it, it wasn't under the circumstances that he'd hoped to be able to make an impact. He would be held prisoner for years before finally being beheaded in the city. But because I believe of the churches, the, the letter that he wrote to the church, Rome would continue to make an incredible impact in their city because they stayed connected to one another in the ways Paul wrote about. I like Paul. Here's what I want to know, what I want to know. I want to know that our church wants to make an impact in our neighborhood. And I know as your pastor, because I love you and I love this church, that that is our heart's desire. That we don't want to just be an island here at 32nd and Thunderbird, but that we want to be a bridge for people to know the love of Jesus Christ. We want to see people come to Christ and experience the same life-saving relationship so many of us have experienced already. We want all of this to matter for something more than ourselves, do we not? Yes. And we desire that we all have, to one degree or another, only strength is only our desire to want to be connected to one another is only strengthened when we are doing that. If you're not connected beyond Sunday morning at Genesis, I want to encourage you to take a step today because we need you Amen. and you need us. Yes. The impact that God wants to make in and through this church is fully dependent on our willingness to be connected with one another. And not just for our own selfish reasons, though there are benefits of it. I want to keep saying that. <laughs> but because the kingdom of God is at hand, and I'll be honest with you, those who don't know about it, who have not received that, are facing eternal separation from God. And if it's God's desire that no one would perish, then it ought to be ours as well. Amen. So I have an opportunity for you today. We are launching a variety of groups that meet throughout the week to help us stay connected and strengthen our impact in our neighborhood and in our city. And I'm gonna encourage you to take a step of faith and get connected here beyond Sunday morning. Sunday morning is great. Don't leave this behind. 
but there is a place for you to get more intimately connected with groups of people here at this church that not only would you be strengthened in your faith, but they would be strengthened in their faith to enable us to make an even greater impact in the world. And it's not only because you've been created and called for it, which you have been, but it's because it will motivate you towards that greater end. And so after our service today, you'll actually have the opportunity to meet some of the leaders who are a part of our groups. We have eight groups here, which is pretty miraculous. Yeah, for our size church. If you can't find an option, I don't, I don't know if I can help you. I just don't. There's a lot. There's a lot. Okay, they'll be hanging out in the lobby. We have like a group's gauntlet you have to walk through to get out of the building. It's very intentional on our part. There is candy at the table. So if that's motivation for you, go for it, whatever it takes. But they're gonna be hanging out there and they would love to meet you. I know they would love to meet you. And they would love to help you get connected to their group. There's men's groups, there's a women's group, there are couples groups, there's all sorts of different kinds of groups. They meet on Mondays and Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays. Any time of the week, you can basically find a group to get, there's a young adult group, you can get connected in that way. So swing by, find out about a group and get connected. Just give it a shot, yes. right? So many people, I, I don't know, it seems like a big, just give it a shot, just go, go like three times. And if they all annoy you, come talk to me and I'll find you a different group, okay? It won't happen, but I promise, right? I promise you, we have got great group leaders who will help you every step of the way. This is a step you do not want to miss out on. Yes. And it's one that will not only help you as you seek to make an impact in your world, but it will help our church live out our mission of being a community of changed lives, changing lives. Let's pray. Father, you are so wise. And I love that you, all that we do is so intentional and so purposeful. It's my prayer, God, for us as a church to be strengthened in our community and our connection to one another so that our impact might be greater. Lord, we, we, we desire to see your kingdom grow here on this corner. We desire to see every seat in this room filled on a Sunday morning. We desire to see people be baptized, be connected, to let their spiritual gifts be unleashed in this community. God, we desire that the, the least of these in our community would be served. And we know that that can only happen if the connection we have with one another is strengthened. And so God, do a good work in us this morning. I pray for you this morning. If you're on the fence about this, if you're a little intimidated, I pray for courage in you. I pray that you would have the courage to just take a step of faith, to believe that God has something good for you by connecting with one of our groups. And Lord, we thank you that you didn't call us to an isolated faith. But you called us to a faith that exists and flourishes in community. What a privilege it is what a joy it is to be a part of something so great and so far beyond what our own minds could imagine. So I pray you do a good work in us that we might be the light of the world as we leave this place, that you might strengthen our impact in our workplaces and in our schools and in our neighborhoods. Thank you for Jesus who makes all this possible who unites us together in a singular focus. And it's in his name we pray, amen.